Welcome to Monday, January 30th, 2023, your day with the podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com and YDOT. Call 511 to get all the latest road closure and road condition information. Continued very cold, folks. The Arctic blast will continue to have a really icy grip on us today, tonight, and into Tuesday before slowly releasing and slowly, I want to use the word slowly, going to have moderating conditions as we go through the middle to the end of the week. Key word there is slowly, but temperatures will begin to moderate. We will see the worst of the Arctic conditions and snow easing out of the area as we work our way through the next 24 to 72 hours. And really kind of once we get over the hump by the end of the week, conditions are going to be, let's say, more manageable, not nearly as intensely cold. And we don't see a lot of new snow coming our way. Now, of course, anytime Arctic air leaves, you're going to have a period of wind and blowing snow is going to again rear its ugly head on roads and highways in the region as we go through the week. Winds pick up always after an Arctic air moves out. An Arctic air mass causes a big change in air pressure. So when it begins to move, there's going to be some wind, but that will make temperatures a little bit warmer. So you get a little bit of bad with the good as Arctic air retreats. Now, we don't expect any significant new snow the rest of this week and into the weekend. Some mountain snow, but we actually have a chance to dig out in some areas. And boy, really dig out. The the amount of snow, as we'll show you here in a minute, in the month of January in some areas has been incredibly impressive. I know a lot of you are tired of the snow and tired of winter, and I don't blame you. But the long term, folks, is going to stay active. While we really don't have a lot going on mid to late in the week and over the weekend, We'll show you a very busy jet stream pattern cutting across North America as we go into the middle of February. So there's going to be more wintry weather coming as we go through the month of February. Of course, we had scenes like this, Interstate 80 Saturday, just a total mess and still dealing with a lot of closures at the time of this recording. Now, we had scenes like this, which were awful. Then we had beautiful scenes like this out of Alpine, Wyoming, of all the fresh snow and a lot of the snow came straight down in some areas with big flakes making for some just beautiful winter scenes. And when you look at the snow, uh, we're going to have to go back and kind of look at the record books, but this is going to be a record breaking January in some parts of the West. There's some areas in Wyoming and Western Nebraska and the high mountains of Colorado that uh, have gotten some amazing amounts of precipitation. We'll be looking at Casper's records there. Casper, just one hundredth short of two inches of liquid water equivalent for January. Now, that may not seem terribly impressive, but for the month of January it is. January is one of the driest months of the year. And then if you look at Casper's snow totals, 37 inches for the month of January. Three feet of snow in the month of January, up to just about 70 inches of snow for the season way ahead of last year and way ahead of normal, obviously. Now let's take a look at Lander. Lander, two and a half inches of liquid water equivalent for the month. We'll take a look, see if that's a record. And then Lander, three feet of snow for the month. Cheyenne, I show Cheyenne because it was an area that had been missing the snow. 1.73 is gonna rank probably in the top five of precipitation for the month of January and probably a top five January for the month is for the amount of snow in Cheyenne, just under 20 inches for the month. So amazing amounts of moisture. Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, this is going to be uh, the wettest January, probably the second wettest January as it's looking in Scotts Bluff database and a foot and a half of snow for the month. So just incredibly amount of snow. And then you look at the high country. Again, very, very impressive snowfall amounts in the high country, especially I tell you, the upper plat, the, these drainages right here, this, this was a big focal point for very heavy snow in the mountains. We got many reports of probably approaching four feet in the Sierra Madres and Snowy Range Mountains. The Colorado high country is showing the same. These, these snowpack totals going this deep now into the season, extremely impressive. So even if it's an average March or April, it's going to be a really big runoff, the biggest runoff. Uh, in quite a while in the Central Rockies. 
Here we go with today's 500 millibar chart showing the high along the west coast, opening the door to Canada. And we know the story. This map looks just like the ones we showed you all of last week, just opening the door to Canada. Now, this system that broke off is going to head this way and cause some problems. We'll show you that here in a minute. As the Arctic air spills in, these are the temperature anomalies. So the Arctic air is through just about all of Texas by later this afternoon and evening. Now, I talked about that low hanging back. Well, that low is going to go right over this Arctic boundary. And as it does so, we have the potential for a large scale icing event from Texas through Oklahoma, through Arkansas, then into parts of the lower Midwest. Uh, this will be developing later today, tonight, and into Tuesday and into Wednesday morning. So some real travel problems here as a band of ice. Snow will be on the northern edge of it, but there could be a lot of ice here. Travelers keep that in mind as the cold spreads eastward. This is by tomorrow afternoon, and this is by Wednesday afternoon. So you can see it goes across most of the nation. By the weekend, though, you can see a westerly flow. This is where the temperatures really, really moderate because we're not talking Canadian air anymore. But notice the vortex of cold here does slide into New England, and the coldest temperatures of the winter season will hit the Northeast from Detroit through New York and uh, they're getting very cold into DC, but uh, you're looking at well below zero temperatures in New England and across the Northeastern part of the United States. They have not had anything remotely that cold at all so far this winter, but they're gonna get a, a taste of the Arctic. And then you can see we're getting the sides of a bit of a Chinook here coming our way. So out West, we do have relief from the cold. Things do get better late in the week. And over the weekend, they're not going to be perfect, but they get better, but it's going to be a slow process. Now, this is the precipitation basically from tomorrow through Sunday. So you can see there's not a lot here in the West. This is part of a system Saturday that will bring some snow to the high country, the Pacific Northwest and parts of Central and Northern California. But there's a large part of the nation right here that doesn't have a lot of new snow coming our way once we get past today. So this is the break in the weather that's coming. Longer term, this is by next Monday. Another trough is going to swing on through. Then we're queuing up more storms in the Pacific again, and this is where it gets busy. So we have a break. Next week, we get a more active pattern. This is by uh, 10 days, just about 10 days from now. So you can see a lot of troughiness, another high pressure ridge in the, in the Pacific building and coming our way. So February is going to be throwing us a lot of curveballs as well. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, I know a lot of you are done, done with winter, but unfortunately we've got some more to get through and we'll keep you informed. Have yourself a good Monday. See you.